this is the Provoke Prawn, and in this video I want to talk to you about the wiring logic of Lee and Lee's Unifans when you are using them on various different all-in-one coolers. Now in this instance I'm using Lee and Lee's SL Infinity fans and the reverse fans on Corsair's H150i Elite Caplix. But the logic here will work the same no matter the cooler you're using because essentially what I'm going to do is show you how to wire them up in a logical way. Now I'm using reverse fans here with an intake pole on them, but that's not the point of this video, although I have done separate ones on the placement of all-in-one coolers. The point is to talk about the wiring logic, because with a standard triple pack of your normal Infinity fans, you obviously get the Infinity controller, which makes life a lot easier because it means you can wire up to 16 fans potentially in here. You'd use this flat controller that's included with that. So if you get the triple pack, you get the controller and you get four of these cables, you can then obviously create four different groups with up to four fans per cable and connect them up to the controller using this flat connector. But if you are looking to connect up three fans or let's say two fans and all in one cooler, that might not be the best possible logic because you may want to do it in a different way. So I'm going to show you the way I do it and explain the logic of why and how you would do it if you want to do the same. So with a single fan, this is a reverse blade fan, but the same logic applies to the other fans. You usually get this style of cable included with it, which is just a connector on one end. And then on the other end, you have fan power and RGB cable connections. I've done a wiring guide on how to connect up these fans separately that I'll link to in the description that explains it in more depth on all these different things. But essentially you'd plug one cable into a PWM header on your motherboard and then the other one into the five volt header. But for our purposes, what we're looking to do is connect it up to the three fans on the radiator. So the ones we put on this Corsair cooler, I'm gonna connect those cables up to that. But instead of plugging them into the control directly, i.e. with that flat cable, we're going to use an adapter. So Leon Lee sells an ARGB cable kit, and in that kit is a specific RGB cable connector, which looks like this, or similar to this, which is basically has a male 5 volt header connections on it. So you can see it's got three pins coming out of it, and on the other end, it then plugs into the sync port. So on your Leon Lee Infinity controller has two sync ports. These sync ports allow you to plug in other RGB cables from Lee and Lee. In this case, that converter cable, and we can, can plug that into the controller. We then run the fan power from the fans that we've plugged into the radiator through the case and up and into the CPU fan header on the top of the motherboard. What this means is that the fan power is then controlled by the motherboard because it has control over the CPU fan speed and that's plugged in here for reference, so you can see that on the top left. And then the pump itself, so whatever pump you're using, in this case the H150i Elite Capolix, plugs into the AIO pump header. So there's a cable that comes out of that, and that will plug into the AIO pump header. So then you've got the pump plugged into the AIO header, and then the fans plugged into the CPU fan header. This means that the motherboard has control over the fan power for your fans on the radiator and the all-in-one pump, but, the RGB lighting is controlled still by Leon Lee's L-Connect software via the controller. So you can see here that I have multiple groups of fans in here. So I'm actually using all four of the standard ports on the Infinity controller. But then I have the three additional fans on the radiator where the power is controlled by the motherboard and the RGB is controlled through the sync port using the ARGB cable kit. This then means that you can make the benefit of maximum RGB and still control things via L-Connect, but you have the fan power on the CPU all-in-one cooler controlled by your motherboard. So there's no complaints from the motherboard in terms of CPU fan not being detected, but more importantly, it means that it just has control over the fans and the temperature of your CPU as a whole. This is my preferred way of doing it. You could, if you prefer, and you want a simpler way of doing it, just connect those fans up directly to the controller using that flat connector, and you could do it that way. But this is my preferred way of doing it because it's a bit more logical, and it's the way I would do. Also frees up one of those ports for extra fans, as you've seen in the Dynamic Evo there. So if you want to see that full video, check out the link in the description. I've gone into more depth on this and other things.